if you ever want to take like a crude PDF map and bring it into something like CalTopo where you can map out the real boundaries and see how it affects maybe hiking trails or areas that you're interested in, here's how I've been doing it. It does require a pro account for CalTopo. There are free ways to do it, but I found this is definitely the easiest way. It also lets you export maps to a PDF uh, that have map and location data on them as well. So let's dive in. Let's start and just use the Forest Service closure order as an example. Here you can see it's got uh, some attachments. There's different things like the closure order and lists all of these things here, all these trails. We want the map and let's just get the bridge fire map. And here's this big closure area. We're gonna go ahead and save this to the desktop. Then we're going to go into CalTopo, and to start this, we're going to have to create and save a new map. So we could just add any point that we want on here. So let's just add a marker there, delete. And now we're going to save it. We're going to call this temp, save the map. And now I'm going to go into add. And under add, you're going to look for map sheet. We're going to click on map sheet, and then it's going to ask us for the file that we want and here is the file that I just downloaded and we'll call this usfs bridge fire map and then hit add and then it's going to upload and we usually have to wait a minute or two this is going pretty quick that's good all right so now it is saved to my account we're going to reload this page I'm just going to give it a refresh here and we're going to click on this and there it is. Now, the interesting thing about this, which I appreciate, is that the Forest Service made this a geo-referenced PDF. What does that mean? It means the PDF file or the map inside the PDF file has latitude and longitude for that map area built in. And I've noticed that the Forest Service maps usually have this in there when you get a PDF. So now at this point, we have this overlaid in the correct place. And over here, if I wanna change the opacity, I can nudge the opacity down. And then I'm free to create a polygon. Let's go here, polygon. And then I can simply trace around the edges and create this map. And you can see you're just gonna go around this whole closure area up on top. And if you wanna adjust the opacity, you can do that here. And you can also zoom in on areas where it might get a little bit tricky and we can go here and click around it. And when you're done, you'll have a polygon like this. And here you can see there's the closure area and you can go in deep and see what's closed and what's not closed based on the polygon you drew. And you can always up the opacity here on this if you just wanna double check what's closed and not closed. So that's all you have to do. Now, what if the image you have or the data that you have doesn't have that latitude and longitude in there? Well, you can do that in CalTopo too. All right, so here I am on the Angeles National Forest Facebook page. A lot of times they will post these as images in here. So here it is, I'm gonna open this image in a new tab, and then we're gonna go ahead and save this image. Okay, now we're back in CalTopo. We're just gonna create a, dummy map dummy you big dummy now it's going to ask us to save call us jpeg test teast now we're going to go back over here to add and then map sheet choose file now we're going to pick the jpeg and we can call this facebook image okay now it's telling us it doesn't have any geo referencing information for the JPEG, which we knew, but we're gonna get around that. So we're gonna go close. Now you can see it just plopped the map on the page here. Not really anything useful, but if you look down here, we have two reference points. And all we need to do is pick two points on the um, uploaded JPEG and match them to two points, latitude and longitude on the real map, and it will overlay it for us. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me look on this map here. Okay, I know where this is from these switchbacks. This is a place called Vincent Gap. I just know that. If you didn't know it, you might have to do some more research on here, but let's right click here and we're gonna go to mark point one. And then let's go to Vincent Gap. Okay, I'm gonna do mark lat long one. So that point is mapped on there. What is this right here? This is the intersection of 138 and Angeles Crest Highway. 
So let's do this as mark point two, and then I'm gonna find that on the map, and we can make this opacity lower so that it's not, um, not as distracting here. And we can also change the layer. So if I just wanna to go to like a Google map, which is gonna be easier for what we just did, that will work as well. Okay, here's Wrightwood, there's 138, there's the junction we're just looking at. So we're gonna right click there, mark lat long two, and you'll see we have them down here. And you know we can play with this and it looks like it matched it pretty well. And now once we're feeling good about it, we can hit save. All right, so here we go, it's uploaded. We go to Facebook image and we can go in here, we can download this waypoint dummy before. And now we have it in here, and if we want to adjust the opacity, just to double check, you can see there it is roughly matching up to uh, the lines on the real map, and you can see which trails are closed or not. Now, if you wanted to create one of these on your own, it's easy enough to do it. Let's just do a new map. Let's do a new polygon right here, and it doesn't matter. You can do, obviously, whatever you wanted in here. Close zone. All right, so now we have our close zone and to export this as a PDF, all we have to do is go to the print. You can see it gives us these boundaries here. We wanna make sure that we have it in the boundaries. And over here, we wanna make sure we have geospatial PDF. The geospatial is the important part that says that the latitude and longitude and location data is embedded in the PDF file. So it looks good and we can change the uh, layer that we have underneath it, it can be you know, anything we want can do this. So let's go ahead and generate this PDF. And there we have the close zone. And if we save this, so I just saved that. So let's go ahead and create a new map on here like we did before. So there's a point and then we're just gonna go to add map sheet. We're gonna pull in the one we had before, add. Sometimes it'll get queued. It takes a second for it to happen, but it does happen. And here's the map sheet and it's right over the spot that we had before and again we can do we can do this fun stuff to fool around with the opacity hopefully this is helpful and there are other ways to do it but again this was by far the easiest way there's a tool called avenza maps uh, it's on mobile i will be doing a review on that shortly so stay tuned for that there are ways to work with pdfs in that platform as well but if you haven't used caltopo it's a great tool you can use it for free only some of the features are blocked behind these pro levels um, but you can use a hell of a lot of features on here uh, for free by just creating accounts or not even creating an account and do a lot of different maps and planning on here. It's a tool that a lot of uh, search and rescue teams use and some government agencies use. Great tool, so kudos to the CalTopo guys because you're doing a great job. And I will have an updated guide for that in the near future as well because it's changed a little bit. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Any questions, any tips of your own, leave them underneath and I will see you out on the trails.